Good morning and welcome in. My name is Tracy Campbell and you are here on my page, My Sweet Home Living, where you may be watching me on Craft Around the Clock Facebook group as well, where we have live crafting almost every day of the week, early morning to late at night. If you love watching live crafting or getting inspired by some DIY crafting projects, then that's the place you want to be. Check it out. Uh, we would love to have you over there. Welcome in. So surprise, I did not originally plan to go live today. <laughs> Usually I'm an early Saturday morning gal, but I had an extra opportunity to join my Crafter on the Clock friends today. And so I thought, yes, let's do it. Let's do it. Because it's a fun Friday theme day over there in the group. We usually have some fun themes going on on Fridays. And today is no exception. I'm scooting my table a little bit more this way so you all can be able to see a little bit more of what we're going to be working on today. It's Grocery Trash to Treasure Day, uh, theme day over there in the group. And if you are familiar with me, you know I love, I love taking trash and transforming it into something that you are proud to use in your home decorating. We do it all the time here on my page. And so I thought, well, how fitting, right? How fitting that I hop in today's lineup and uh, see you guys this morning. So chime in. Uh, if you're watching on the replay, I'm so happy you're here as well. And uh, I would love to see you here. And the only way I can see you here is if you chime in down below in the chat. And uh, that way I get to see you, get to know you, and um, we get to welcome you as well. We get to get, be good friends here. Good morning, Miss Joy. How are you all? Good morning, Miss Lisa from Junk to Joyful. So glad y'all are here. Well, the project I have today is really easy. I try to keep it like really simple and um, easy to do, all right? But I thought I have to show you all some of the things that you can create with what you would consider trash from ordinary things that you would probably throw away from things that you get at the grocery, okay? so this hair <laughs> this is going crazy so let's just take a peek let's take a stroll down memory lane really quick hey miss jamie from oklahoma glad you're here miss patricia from east kentucky you guys an oatmeal container let's flip this camera around shall we that way you all can see the um there we go there we go you can see the labels I'm telling you guys, printable labels are where it's at when it comes to using grocery trash and containers and jars and boxes and things like that because they are just so cost efficient that you can print them as many times as you want and you can just, you can whip up like a whole kitchen full or whole dining room full of, of decor with some of these fun kitchen style uh, decorating labels, printables. I've done these before on lives. These video replays are in my video library. This is a Starbucks bottle, another piece of trash that I would have ordinarily thrown away, whip it into something, and I use these little things in my little vignettes all over the place. Our most recent grocery trash to treasure, let me show you this. This is what I like to call a Jack B. Nimble candlestick <laughs> because it's real tall and it kind of fits the theme of Jack B. Nimble. If you know the nursery rhyme, you know what I'm talking about. This is made from an aluminum foil roll. So like after you use the whole roll of foil, what you're left with is that real sturdy cardboard roll. We turned this candlestick into a Jack B. Nimble. Well, we turned the roll into a candlestick rather <laughs> uh, to use in primitive style decorating. And that's my style, but you can finish these projects out, get the idea, but you can finish them out to fit your own style. Uh, in a real fun uh, project that I like to do a lot, I like to grubby up some old jars, like spaghetti sauce jars, um, marinara, pasta sauce jars, you know, those kinds of things, pickle jars, anything that comes in a glass jar, I love to use. So you can see how I use that same printable label and made two different styles of projects. Now, if you are a crafter and you like to make and sell your products, these are where it's at. Think of things that cost li very little to create that you can resell so that your profit margin is larger. These are great things to use um, for things like that. 
Now, here's another jar idea. <laughs> this is one of my favorite ones too. We used uh, some more grocery trash to treasure. This is a large pickle jar, okay? Combined with some tea bags, some used tea bag papers, okay? We unrolled the tea bags after we had finished using them, opened them up, and decoupage them onto a jar, and you get this wonderful, cool patina effect to your jar. Paired with some uh, fabric cutouts, we made this apple-themed uh, jar lamp uh, last summer, I believe it was. And then I paired it also, let me take this off. Now, I did not finish this tube at the top. But this is another um, aluminum foil tube, <laughs> piecing that together with the jar and the tea bag labels. And you can get these little tin uh, lampshades off of Amazon. And you have a super cute little lamp for uh, a little corner in your kitchen or a little cupboard, um, maybe on your cupboard or buffet or in a little hutch area. But grocery trash to treasure does not mean that it has to look cheap, even though it can be very inexpensive to create. So I just had to do a little quick trip down memory lane so that you all can get a feel for the types of projects that you'll see on Grocery Trash to Treasure Day. Now, I have not been able to watch a whole lot this morning, but um, I know there have been some amazing projects and there will continue to be some amazing projects all throughout the day. So I don't want you to miss out. It's all available in the Craft on the Clock group. And if you miss out, <laughs> that's okay because the replays will be pinned in the featured section uh, throughout the day. So I'm going to show you the link to the Craft on the Clock group. Now let's see if that pops up on your screen. Um, oh, Miss Tini, I'm not in the Craft on the Clock group. One of my creative sisters might have to share me over there. I have it set to share, but it's still glitchy and Facebook is not working. Hey, Miss Sherry, how are you? Good morning. Hey, Miss Victoria. So somebody will get us shared over there. I know Miss Pat from Unique, if she's on, she could probably share me. Um, let's see, Miss Lisa from Junk to Joyful, if you're on, you can share me. That'll work too. <laughs> Thank you all so much. So I just like to pair these things in little sweet little vignettes. You all know that's kind of like my jam. I love putting things together. But everything in this little vignette that I had styled up here before we started um, was all created, with the exception of the pie, was all created using grocery trash. Okay? So you can do this and come up with some really cute things. Now we're going along with the berry theme today. The berry theme. I've not done anything quite with berries, I don't think. But we're gonna keep it simple and we are using a printable label from one of my favorite designers on Etsy, Cloud Petals Co. Okay, tossing some things over to the side because we're gonna need some workspace here. Let me set this down here, get our pie out of the way. And our piece of grocery trash that we are using today is one of my favorite things to use. <laughs> um, oh, thank you, Miss Patricia. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Okay, we are using one of these lemonade drink mix containers today. We're going to do a little bit different effect on this. This is going to be an experiment because I've not done this technique before on one of these containers. So we'll see how it goes today. We'll see how it goes. Good morning, Miss Francis. How are you? Okay, uh, let me get my bearings here. We are, I've already taken the label off of this. This is a lemonade, like, um, you know, like the powdery lemonade uh, drink mix. I get these usually at Walmart, but you can get them anywhere. But they come in like these really nice containers. I love the size of these. And you all have seen me make one of these before, and I should have grabbed it and brought it to the table today, but I don't even know where it's at. <laughs> I don't know. It's somewhere around here, tucked in a little, uh, little corner or a little display somewhere. Um, a lot of times I like to spray paint these like a brown rusty color and then grunge them up sort of like I've done on this one. This was an oatmeal container, but it's very similar in nature, but they're real heavy duty cardboard um, style containers and they just make perfect combinations. Um, 
with labels. Okay, thank you so much, Miss Pat. I appreciate you, friend. If Facebook would get its act together some days, I tell you, where would we be? <laughs> we just wouldn't know how what to do. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, so I will send the link to this sweet little label set. I keep looking over here. There's these little birds that keep popping over here by my window, and they're scaring me because I'm, I'm like out of the corner of my eye, I see something moving. <laughs> And if you all know kind of what I was doing about 45 minutes ago, you might know why I'm a little jumpy. <laughs> and I'll share that with you here in a little bit. Um, this is a sweet little label set from Cloud Petals Company, Cloud Petals Co. on Etsy. Um, I will share the link with you later on uh, over on my Telegram channel and um, my broadcasting channel. You know, Facebook has given some creators this av availability to use a broadcasting channel. So some of you that maybe don't use Telegram, um, I, I can share it to you on the broadcast channel now. Now, I just want to warn you, the broadcast channel, if something were to happen with Facebook or my page on Facebook and it goes bye-bye or not available, the broadcasting channel would be the same way because they are connected to Facebook. The only true way to make sure that you don't lose contact with me is to make sure that you're on my Telegram uh, channel. <laughs> so I just kind of want to warn you, even though that broadcasting channel is really easy for those of you that don't use Telegram, if you don't use Telegram, I just can't stress enough how important it is. That's, that's your one sure bet that you won't lose contact if things go haywire on Facebook and you just never know when and that may happen so i just want to caution you if you're using the broadcast channel um don't g let it give you a false sense of security okay <laughs> um if you go if i go unnoticed for uh, for you know days or months at a time or weeks you'll know oh, oh something's happened you can always find me over on um the other main streaming platform you know what i'm talking about <laughs> with the red logo uh-huh <laughs> but um, I send messages and everything over on my Telegram channel quite frequently. Okay, this little set, I printed off, there's four labels in this set, but I printed off um, just two of them. I'm only going to use one of these today, but these, she already has these formatted uh, to size print like this, which I think is super user friendly. Um, and I'm going to be using the Mixed Berries Pie Filling label today. How cool is that? It's already grunged. She has these already with that wonderful patina look to them. Good morning, Miss Pam. How are you? Good morning, Tamira. Uh, so we're going to use that label, but I'm going to put a little bit different paint technique on this today that I've not tried before. So while we, um, let's get started on this first. And that way, while it's drying, we will uh, cut the label out and do that kind of thing, okay? So, I am going to need a sponge brush. Let's think about what we're going to need here. Uh, I'm going to need some coffee podge, and I'm going to need a little bit of cinnamon, which I think I have right down here. Yes. Okay. We're going to play up this little berry theme. Well, I thought I had my cinnamon down here, but maybe I don't. Um... Ah, I see it. Hang on, I gotta grab it. It's within arm's reach, almost. <laughs> almost. There we go, not too far. Just a little too far to lean my chair over. I had to get my big, big container of cinnamon. Good morning, Miss Anita. Thank you. How are you all? I'm so happy to see y'all this morning. Um, on a Friday, different, right? When there was an opening that popped up, I thought, oh, I gotta get in there. I gotta get in there so I can see y'all today. Um, good morning, Miss Pam. How are you? Cindy, Melanie. Oh, goodness. That's gonna be a hot one today. A hot one here in Kentucky. Okay, it still has a little bit of that glue where that label was. That's okay. I'm not even gonna stress about it. I'm gonna use um, a real soft white. It's an off-white. Um, chalk paint for this. You can use any color you want. Um, this is a little bit of the same technique that I've used on some jars before. Um, however, I have never done this technique on one of these containers. So we'll see. We'll see how it works. And if it works out good, you might decide to create one of your own. I love saving all these containers and things that our food items come in. Um, 
but sometimes I let them pile up <laughs> and I have a whole pile of jars and containers that are waiting for me to do something with so um, I don't know if any of you all are like me and in the same situation there <laughs> I'm probably gonna be doing um, either some quick videos or some real quick lives on um, getting some of these decorated up because I want to get some of these uh, made up because I know some of you all like to um, like to get them for yourself if you don't make your own you sometimes those of you like to shop some of the items that I might have for sale occasionally which is not very often so um, you all keep your eyes and ears open because we will be having a sale probably some point this summer of um, jars and containers that you can use in your home decorating okay I would paint the bottom I'm not going to paint that right now or I won't be able to set it down now that cardboard I will say hmm, I forgot towels today um, that cardboard is soaking up that chalk paint really quick so it's probably going to need just a, another real quick light coat um, but it will dry really quick because that cardboard is just soaking it up um, you have a stash of containers too well good well maybe we can just um, <laughs> have a container and jar a themed week or something <laughs> oh, that's funny I know I, I just can't stand to throw them away they're too good I mean if they're jars that I can't reuse for you know canning or things like that um, I gotta I gotta repurpose them and I've got some really cute ideas that I want to share with y'all too so all right that was that was super quick right now coat number two I'm gonna put this one on and this is gonna be a little bit different of a, of a look than some of my other containers like this that I have done because obviously this one's gonna be white um, but of course we won't leave it white we have to add some layers of, of technique to it <laughs> so we're not gonna stop here but it's all things that you can get really inexpensive things that I use a lot so if you've already created a lot of the projects that I use you probably already have these supplies on hand which is another reason why I like to kind of keep things simple in that way that you all can um, you know most of the projects that I make will coordinate together nicely um, if you're using them in your own home they're inexpensive to make so that if you want to make and resell them that's an added bonus and you can change the style up a little bit too depending on what colors you use or what fabric choices you make or things like that so um, hopefully these project ideas can be altered to fit lots of different decorating styles not just my style <laughs> good morning miss Dee. how are you passing the love out miss pam thank you so much Oh, thank you, Miss Becca. I really do enjoy it. Um, love giving you all ideas, and you will inspire me just as much. And um, if you don't already know, I do have, we're going to let that dry a little bit, set that off to the side. Um, I do have a All Things Primitive Decorating and Crafting Group where you can share your ideas into. Uh, things that you make or you can go there to get ideas to be inspired. So this is the label that I showed you at the beginning Ooh, doo -doo. Let's hold it up a little bit better than that. There we go uh, The berry pie filling and I think this would make a perfect combination with that little lattice top pie that little faux pie That I showed you all a little bit ago So um, this will probably be paired with that when I go to decorate uh, and use it in little vignettes, but 
Um, that's another one of the things that I love doing is taking these items that you can create and showing you how to pair them together and decorate with them. So, you know, a lot of times we can create just for therapy, right? Um, or for fun or for, you know, as a hobby. But once you create something, is it something that you can use, right? That, that's my big thing. I, I, I want to be able to use it. And um, so that's why I take lots of photos and share with you all when I do create something, giving you some ideas on how you can use those items and decorate your home with it. It's not just a make it and then what type of thing. I kind of carry it a few steps further and show you how to pair these items together. And usually the pieces that I pair them with are all items that I have created. You know, just continuing the theme of, of things that you can make to put together. You don't always have to, to go out and buy things for your decor. You can make them. Uh, and a lot of times if you kind of like this style, sometimes it's hard to find things that kind of fit into this style. You have two large oatmeal containers. I want it perfect, perfect, Miss Chris. Okay, now this is the perfect size for this container, okay? But as you can see, we can't go just stark white. <laughs> Is anyone else freezing? Uh-oh, go out and come back in if you're freezing up. Sometimes that helps. Um, yes, it's kind of like a Country Time Lemonade drink mix container. It's just like the Walmart off-brand. Um, so you can, that's what I use a lot of. And a lot of times I will spray paint them uh, and then grunge them up. This time we're going with a white base layer and then we're gonna grunge it up. So we'll see how this goes today. Um, this, I'm trying to think about this as I go, because this is the first time I've done this, this style of a, of a container. Um, I don't know what I'm going to use for the top of my jar, my container yet. However, I will tell you, as I have done some of these, I have noticed a lot of times if I put, um, you know, a fabric piece or something over the top, let's show you, like this. these birds are, are messing with me over here again. I put like the cheesecloth on top and tie it off and sometimes it gets a little droopy right here in the center or I have to worry about something you know pushing on it and puncturing a hole in it so for this jar for this container I think I'm gonna do it upside down I think I'm gonna put the open end on the bottom and I think that's what we're gonna do we're gonna go with it we're just gonna go with it <laughs> um, I have some adhesive markings where that label was on there from the beginning. I'm going to put that to the back and I want to put this label. I'm not going to center it. Okay. Uh, you can see I have a little bit more head space up here than at the bottom. I want it a little bit closer to the top. I could use the lid in here. Let me tell you why I don't use that Lori. Um, <laughs> it is the brightest yellow you ever did see. <laughs> I have tried spray painting these lids. I have tried chalk painting these lids, but nothing truly keeps it covered. Um, if you are using a fabric that is really dense and really thick that you know will hide that yellow, then go for it. Okay. But this yellow is like nobody's you know ever seen before it's like a yellow that like whew, it shows up no matter where you use it <laughs> so that's why so i'm glad you brought that up because i did want you know i, I should address that um goodness you guys that's like oh it's getting toasty in here it's gonna warm up quick and i forgot to turn my fan on um okay i am going to use my coffee podge Y'all have seen me use this before, right? Um, it's the coffee grunge mixed with some school glue. The yellow will work well with the sunflower. Yeah, it sure would, Judy. You're right. Um, but it's even like, it's almost like a neon yellow. <laughs> My hair oh, has a mind of its own today. It's like going, <laughs> it keeps wanting to fly out. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some of this coffee podge. I've got coffee podge all over the little handle of the sponge brushes, which is why I'm like touching it like it's going to eat me or something. <laughs> um, I am going to 
cover this container with this coffee podge and you can see what it's doing it's scrunching it up for us honestly it's going to give us that vintage look over that white um, and it's going to look so good and it's super easy you just apply it right on there you already get your cinnamon speckles you already get your coloring um, without having to add extra steps you've already got it all mixed together and just put it on there that's what we're going with now it will dry a little more delicate in nature you know your brush strokes won't be quite as harsh okay I'm looking to see where the back of it is and I'm gonna put my label on there while that is still wet let's flip it around where I can see it I don't know what these birds keep doing. They must be doing something over here. They are constantly coming and going. I don't think we have a nest over here. But I keep seeing them coming back and forth. Something's going on. Okay, so I'm going to smooth this down. And this label, as it gets wet, it will want to start to wrinkle. Um... But I am just going to smooth it down, smooth it down. And I'll probably take a few more times and smooth it down again as we go. But while the rest of this is wet, I'm going to go ahead and apply this same technique all the way around the canister. Okay. And then we can dry it all in one whack. Now, we're going to have to add some berry color in some form or fashion to this canister because that's the theme of the label right we have to make it believable all right so you can apply this a little bit thinner if you want that white to shine through a little bit more um, if you don't have enough cinnamon in your mixture you can add more cinnamon which I thought I might do um, we're gonna kind of see how this goes first now my label's getting a little wrinkly. Uh, I'm gonna apply a little bit of this over top of my label. It will darken your label slightly, okay? However, you can wipe it back as well. While it's still damp, you can wipe some of that back and it will lighten it for you a little bit. Or you can just use just plain, um, Mod Podge or something like that, if you will. I'm going to take my finger and smooth out those wrinkles. And some wrinkles are fine by me. Because old canisters should have wrinkles. Okay. Now, this is going to leave some streaks. Smooth it down. And then if you need to touch it up with your sponge brush or maybe like a, a, a clean sponge brush, I can go over it and wipe back some of that darkness and that'll lighten it back up for me. Okay, that's what we have right now. Whoop, whoop, there we go, that way. <laughs> Hello from Fort Worth, Miss Sheila, how are you? Let's give this a quick dry and we'll finish off the top somehow I haven't decided how we're gonna do the top yet but I have an idea and we have to add a little bit of berry color somewhere somehow we could use some paint um, we could use some ink what else could we use uh, can you use the iron on it you probably could uh, with it being that curved surface might be a little tricky and with this being cardboard I'm not sure uh, because you would have to apply a pretty good pressure I don't know if it might distort the shape of your container I'm not sure not sure hey miss Marie it is simple miss Marie it is simple you just gotta get your hands on it and um, after you do it a few times it, it will be super easy Oh no, Miss Linda, so sorry. Well, 
that's another reason why you should be on my telegram <laughs> oh, you should be on the telegram I can give you uh, let's see now if you're watching this the replay later on YouTube you will not be able to see it let's put my telegram I hope these are showing up for you guys when I do that uh, thank you miss Jeannie yes like this yeah that would be a cute berry color like the color of my shirt yes um, let's give this a quick, quick dry. And you can see how this is going to coordinate with some of the items that I showed you in the beginning of our video, but be a little bit different. You don't want to have everything exactly the same, right? You know, whenever you use these containers, it's easy to kind of get stuck and, and create things that are all look the same. We want similar style, you know, similar style, but uh, not quite all exactly the same. Uh, hi, Miss Sue. Um, oh my goodness, I missed somebody put the command exclamation mark followage, and somebody's been following for 440 days. There's Miss Cheryl. Let's see, hers is going to pop up here in a minute. Stephanie, yours was off also. Oh, but you have Telegram. Awesome. Well, then I put my Telegram up there so you all can. Click over and make sure that you click the join button for that because that's where you'll get notifications. And, you know, the same way with those broadcasting channels, if they turn your notifications off for, for your regular Facebook page, I'm assuming they can turn your notifications off for your broadcast channels as well. So I'm using that broadcast channel if some of you, because I know some of you don't use Telegram, but I'm telling you, I'm not a fan and I'm telling you that it could be a false sense of security. <laughs> So be careful with, with using, you know, signing up for the broadcast channels because I just, I, I don't trust them. <laughs> I don't trust them. Okay, that's what we have so far. Now look, see how well this is going to coordinate with this little uh, buttermilk. Those are going to coordinate so cute. And it's still, <coughs> excuse me. It's still going to coordinate nicely with these little containers because you were tying in some of the same colors. And um, these are just going to go so cute together. So cute. Okay, so let's finish off this top and we'll be done for, the, for this project. We have Grocery Trash to Treasure projects coming your way all day today. All day over in the Craft on the Clock group. Okay. I'm looking. These are the little um, baked fabric circles. I have done a live on how to do these um, in my video library. I think it might be under my Coffee Grunge 101 or Coffee hmm, Fabric Grunging 101. I think if you go to my video library and look for a video that's titled like that, I show you how I make these. And I make them in a big batch at a time and I'm getting low. <laughs> I'm going to have to make some more pretty soon. So I might do I might do another video showing you guys whenever I do those. But I cut them out in, um, you know, in circle shapes. I have two different sizes, a smaller one and a larger size that I typically cut out. I coffee stain them and bake them all in a big batch. And uh, thank you, Miss Jennifer, for, for sprinkling us out. I appreciate you so much. Also, if you're in the comments, you can put in exclamation mark notify, and that may trigger your notifications to turn back on as well, okay? Uh, since some of you have said that your notifications have been turned off um, for my page, you might put that in the comments today while you're watching or even on the replay, uh, exclamation mark notify, and hopefully that will trigger Facebook to turn your notifications back on as well, okay? But these smell absolutely amazing <laughs> and um, I like to use these on top of my jars and uh, jar projects and things like that let me see do I have I don't think I have oh here's one here's a small this is a baby food jar <laughs> another grocery trash to treasure grubby up this little baby food jar and use one of those little fabric uh, baked fabric circles on the top of that and that's kind of what I do. So those circles are ready for me to use whenever I'm doing like large batches of things. Okay. So um, I have a lighter side and a darker side. Now this is a little bit small for um, this can, but I'm okay with that. I kind of kind of like that look but I need to add some berry color to it yes somebody there you go miss Sandy just put um, 
exclamation mark notify all together no spaces and that will yeah see now the chat bot is telling you you'll now get notifications again so oh hope if it works you know <laughs> if it works if it works if it works that's the thing telegram usually always works so there you go another reason and i don't get any kickback for telegram <laughs> it's just it's just i don't want to lose my friends i don't want to lose my friends i am grabbing um some distress ink that's what i'm gonna grab let's do a pink and a purplish or pinky purple i don't know um i love these little mini distress ink things and i don't use them a ton but they are perfect for little projects like this. I'm going to grab a purple and I'm just going to rub a little bit of color on it. And I wish I had a spray bottle back here. That would be perfect. Um, and here's a color. It's called Victorian Velvet, but it's kind of like a soft pinkish. I don't want anything super bright because if this is a vintage container, it's not going to be bright, right? If it, if it were real. So let's kind of explain experiment a little bit Whew. okay let me show you something okay because this will cause you to panic so I rubbed that on there and that's what it looks like okay don't panic because this is water soluble all you really have to do is if you get a baby wipe or dip your you know just dampen your finger you can move that ink around and it's it's pretty bright so we're going to go along with this process. Y'all are going to kind of hang out with me and figure out how we're going to... I'm going to dampen this sponge brush just a little bit with a little bit of Coffee Podge. And that will activate, reactivate that ink so I can kind of like soften the application of that color. Okay. And... I just want little tiny hints of pink or purple on there, berry color, okay? Now let's see, this one might be a softer color. This color is called Victorian Velvet. Is that what I just used? Or I used the grape. This one's called Seedless Grape. I think that was the first one that I used. Okay, this one is uh, called Victorian Velvet and it's a softer berry color and I do like it. So I just want some hints of this color um, around the tops of the container so that you can kind of think okay well maybe some of those that pie filling has spilled over the edge and um, you know puddled around the bottom of the rim it's just something a little believable okay all right I took that little ink pad and that's what I've done now it looks a little harsh, like I said, but you can take a really damp paper towel or like I'm doing, it just barely dipped this sponge brush into that coffee podge and that's allowing me to move that ink a little bit on the surface in other spots to where it doesn't look quite so bright and intense okay now my lighting is going to make it look a little more intense but in real life it's not it's not going to be and this this coffee podge will help darken that color as well okay so that we just have some hints of berry color on there lighting is so not good for this and it's still wet so it's going to have a little bit of sheen to it um, but once that dries hopefully you'll get to be able to get a good picture without the sheen so that you can see what that looks like after it really dries and you could totally skip that step or you could mix together a little just ever so slightly hint uh, a drop of some berry colored like a craft paint like acrylic paint mix it just ever so slightly in just a little dab of the coffee podge and just kind of just sponge it on there in some spots and that'll be another way that you can do that if you don't have these distressed inks because not all of us have those distressed inks at our fingertips so I kind of like to give you other ideas there if uh, 
depending on what you may or may not have at your fingertips. Okay, let's go ahead and let's put, okay, you can see what that's gonna look like. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some hot glue down on the top of my canister. Okay, and then we're gonna press this down. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put this down like this first and this will allow me to be able to make sure that I get it centered. I like to lay it down flat. This is what I do on my jars. And see, that way I can see much easier if it's centered <laughs> on the canister. And then what we'll do, let's get another glue stick real quick. Um, Cause we're probably gonna need that. Then what we'll do is we'll go around the rim and run a little bit of glue around the rim, a little at a time, and press that down and it will kind of you know kind of pinch it as you go around and you'll get these cute little wrinkles these little almost like little pleats uh, around the the brim of your canister and that makes it look so cute okay so see how i'm pinching that Oop, this way uh hmm, hard to get the view just right for you um I'm kind of pinch pleating that there's a little pinch there's a little pinch kind of like the edge of a pie crust almost um, and that hot glue will hold it there really well and then if you wanted to you can embellish it finish it off with a little fabric tie but since I don't have a whole lot of uh, fabric hanging over the rim I'm probably going to skip, you know, I'm not probably not going to add a little fabric tie or anything like that. Probably going to keep it just like it is. Okay. Now I missed a little spot right there. That glue stick didn't quite go in yet. There we go. Okay. There we go. I got glue strings everywhere. <laughs> but if you want to uh, add a little bit of color on your fabric that you put at the top, you can do that as well. Use those same little Distress Ink pads or whatever you come up with and kind of rub around the rim, okay? Rub around the rim and then you can wet it just a little bit and spread out that ink a little bit if you want um, some of that berry color to show through. But there you go. How easy, how easy was that? and only cost us a few pennies uh, if you already have your fabric circles made really the only thing that we had to do i had to do this morning was print out the label and these can be the labels can be reused and reused you can print them as many times as you want and so you may spend you know a couple of dollars on a set of labels but you can print these out and use them for all of your projects. If you make and sell things, my little pie crust is coming off there. Um, you can see how this can be super cost efficient. Pair that with one of our faux pies that we've created before. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna drop it all. Um, but that makes for a sweet little setup that you can set on your kitchen island or on a little buffet, isn't that sweet? And you can change it out, you can add to it, add other items, but the apple pie is in my video library if you wanna catch the replay on that. Actually, they, we call this a faux crab apple pie, but hey, looks like berries in there to me, so. <laughs> you all, I thank you so much for being here today. Stay tuned, we have crafters coming up every 45 minutes all day today up until 9 p.m. Central Time in the Crafter on the Clock group. Enjoy Grocery Trash to Treasure Day. I hope you were inspired, and I will see you again soon. Bye.